Yo, 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 everybody, welcome to Yoko with Frisky's Dimensional Rip. I'm your host, Jen Yoko, and here's my brother from another mother, MC MetroCard Frisky. Happy Black History Month, everybody. Even though there's like one day left, we're not going to leave you hanging. We're going to give you some of our favorite black characters in honor of this historical month. And we're going to have some fun along the way. Who's with me? Are you with me? Uh. Yeah. Before we do that, I got some things to share with my co-host. You know what that means. A, we should have like a crowd say, Yoko reacts. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Check it out. The links are in the description below if you want to follow along. And let's get into it. Check this out from Bumble in oh, honor of Black History Bumble. Month. Okay, is it just me? Or is this a really weird notification? That says, send a love letter and make a black woman smile. Bumble. <laughs> They're encouraging people to just hit on black women. Like, is that weird or no? That's a little weird. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna be this person and just say, can't we just say, hey, just encourage a woman or a person you like? That that's all that needs to be said. For that's, sure. That's just a little weird. All right. Yeah. Um, this weekend we got the brand new release of Cocaine Bear. It's taking the nation by storm. It's a full Cocaine Bear sweep. In honor of that, we got this interesting workout routine <laughs> oh Check oh oh no wait i'm just seeing the thumbnail here what is <laughs> happening oh lord be with me all right just two bros in the woods working out there in the background what is happening is this what men do on their free time yeah that's what they do when they're not making black women happy they're making black bears happy is this in Russia or something? Because this is pretty gay. <laughs> this is Dream's definition of what men should look like. I don't know. This is so... You know what? Good for them. They're not hurting anybody. This is cute. Three bears, two in human suits. All right. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of bears... I want to know the backstory behind this lonely panda. Just oh my god! Oh my god, man! Yeah, like what, what's, what's happening? What happened to him? Did he just get dumped? Did he lose all his money on Bitcoin? Why is he so sad? It does look sad. He's just it. It's like a Saturday night. He could be down there getting all the attention, and he's just like, man, no one's talking to me. He I lost. wish that girl would get me back. <laughs> he lost the first suit dance competition. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. As you remember from last week's episode, there was a wild controversy surrounding the M&Ms. But it's funny. Again? It's funny how no one is talking about this, though. This, to me, is a little con more controversial. It's a freaking okay. M&M &M casket. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> oh, why wow, there's M&M's all over his stuff. That must have cost a lot of money. Family <laughs> said their final goodbyes to their god grandmother as she was put into the ground in an M&M casket. May she rest in peace forever. I guess rest in pieces. I don't like it. <laughs> Whoa. So bad. Oh, my God. Look, dude, bro, there's like M&M's. It's like she's swirling the M&M's all over her tummy. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like, who, who approved this? What were they thinking? Who loves M&Ms that much? <laughs> that must have cost, like, at least 50 grand. Oh, easy. easy. Yeah. And then, um, last week, we had the big vagina cloud in the sky. Oh, yeah, I saw that one. Is that the swirly one? Yeah, and I'll give you, in this week, we got this. Oh, man, the big sperm in the sky? <laughs> Atheist, if Jesus is not real, then please explain this. Yo, Yo, that looks beautiful. This just proves we live in a simulation. That's so funny. We're getting impregnated. Yeah, well, I think that giant sperm in the sky is on its way to impregnate whatever this abomination is. Can it just go to Congress and impregnate them and just reset? Oh my god! <laughs> the world's largest aircraft prototype is called the Airlander 10. The helium-pumped hybrid aircraft consists of an airplane, airship, and helicopter built all in one. It's it's a big-ass booty! It is so dummy thick, y'all. Who thought to end it? Dude, the guy at the bottom's like, I love penetrating it. <laughs> It looks like a woman sitting down. I know. And then, um, when you... Or a, or a guy's booty. Well, when you want to conceive a child, but don't want to take care of it, I give you the smart stroller, which does oh all the work for Lord. yourself. I'm sh sure it won't oh. go into traffic at all. Are you kidding me? It's a Tesla stroller. Why is it a Tesla stroller? I hate it. <laughs> Just push the child. You shouldn't be lazy, cause guess what? Some child molester's gonna hack it and like <laughs> That's what freaking... I'm saying. That's what I'm just saying. Like, this is such easy prey. Oh no! The Tesla baby strollers were such a terrible idea. Yeah, they're gonna reroute it on they're gonna reroute it to their minivan and just steal the child. It's gonna be like drive through for pedos. Mm hmm. What a time to be alive. Up next, um, this is more wholesome, I promise. Let me just uh, get some my bearings in order. No, that's the sperm again. No, that's. Uh, where the hell did it go? I'm always losing these links. Why? Why, why, why? Oh, there it is. Okay. This is from Chinese New Year. It looks like a real life Pokemon. Mm. It's like a kite. Let me see. Kaito. Let's see here. Ooh! Oh! It's beautiful as the phoenix rises. This isn't like Hong Kong. Wow, it's beautiful. Like, holy cow. Listen, forget droids, right? I don't give a shit about um, the uh, drones, right? I want to fly kites and stuff like this. Like, imagine flying a dragon kite instead of a phoenix. Oh, I would love for that. Yeah. I love that. That was pleasant. It's beautiful. And uh, up next, in New York City, there seems to be a rise of subway surfers. Subway surfers are kids that just jump on the back of trains and hang out. They have died, gotten injured. But they're also used for stealing very important objects. Excuse me? Yeah. You're pulling a what Robin Hood. What is happening Hood. here? Ah! <laughs> Pulled off her freaking wig, bro. Snatch that weave like yo, it's the last biscuit at Golden Yo, that Corral. dude done pulled off her wig. And also, just so just so you know, that man could never outrun the train with those pants that he has on. They're halfway down his ass. <laughs> so. That's why he fell. Yeah, I'm like, what are you thinking? Just wear regular pants. And the comments were like, did they steal his belt too? Dang! <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry, but I have re I rewatched that clip so many times. It's, it's so good. It's it, I'm putting this in my uh, I have a Patrick's secret box. Everybody should have one. 
where you're the Patrick Star and you just look at things that make you laugh and you just don't show anybody. You just laugh about it. Yeah. Last but not least, did you see Rihanna's halftime show? No, I didn't. Well, I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version. Okay. This is what went down at the halftime show. Check it out. All right. As we click the halftime show, let's go. Oh, no. You serious? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, she fighting the most, Smash. Okay, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> I love this. Yo, DLC. Rihanna. Rihanna. Yeah, that's like the best TikTok I've ever seen. <laughs> that is the best of oh, bro, I'm gonna shit. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to see this. This is going in Patrick's secret box too. <laughs> I love it. It's wholesome. Thank you. Uh, I needed that. You're welcome. That was Yoko Reacts this week. Hope you enjoyed the fun filled media. And now, without further ado, I'm going to give you a quick dimensional review of the brand new smash hit, c c c cocaine Bear. All right. What happened? Cocaine Bear. She's a black character, so it counts. Black History Month. That's so funny. So it's based on true events. And when they say true events, they really mean, well, this bear ingested a bunch of cocaine at one point. So what if it just went on a killing spree? And that's basically what you get with Cocaine Bear. Which, it does live up to its promise. Bear does kill some people. There are There's a great scene with an ambulance, and that's probably the best part of the movie. But it also wastes a lot of time on the characters. There's a lot of characters in this film. And some of them have like backstories, like one of them is adopting a dog for the first time, and then you got a mom looking for her kids, and you got the drug dealers trying to get the drugs back, and then you got a park ranger that's trying to get laid. <laughs> it's a lot. That is a lot. A I lot feel like you just took me through a, a storm already. Is it a horror movie? What kind of genre would you say this it's a, is? It's a horror comedy. It definitely knows what type of movie it's trying to be. The tone is very goofy. And I just wanted more of that. I, th I didn't think it was enough of the title character. I wanted more cocaine bear action. I wanted to see more gory kills, a higher body count, and some more needle drops. Because it takes place in the 80s. And come on, uh... give me the good music. But overall, it was entertaining. You know, it was definitely something I've never seen before. <laughs> um, there's one part where the bear just takes a nap on someone. I, I felt that. I'm like, that's a mood. That's, a mood that's right funny. Now. But uh, you don't need to rush out and see it. You can wait for streaming, and it's better to watch it at home so you can cut ass with your friends and riff on it. But yeah, it, it was a little underwhelming. Kind of how the same I felt with Megan. You saw Megan. I, I told you, you know, it should have. Should have did this more, should have did that more, but we'll see. Maybe we'll get a cool cane bear sequel. Maybe. Maybe. It's just, we're getting such weird films. And it's sad to say that I'm enjoying more of the original films more than any of the reboots or sequels. Exactly. That's why I went to the movies to support this. You gotta support original ideas. You gotta port, support original cinema. Like, you know, or you can go see Ant-Man 3. <laughs> I'm getting risks reviews. Mi sorry, mixed reviews of it. Well, have you seen Spy Kids 3? No! <laughs> I keep hearing that! Then you already seen Ant Man 3. Uh, damn. No, it, it wasn't that bad. It was disappointing, though. But yeah, yeah. Cocaine Bear. Um, watch it at a matinee price. Matinee price. <laughs> But don't I do wanted drugs, kids. to see that's Dr true. Drugs are bad. Real bad. And now, our feature presentation. What are we discussing this last day? I'm saying last day of Black History Month because by the time this gets out, yeah. it'll probably be like the last day of Black History Month. Yeah, we have like two days left. We're discussing our favorite black characters in Movies, games, cartoons, all the like. 
and uh, we got a list. You got a list. I got a list, and we're mm-hmm. gonna go through it. So, you want to start us off? Oh yes, L- I would love to. All right, everybody. Just so you guys know, I I have to state this now. There are not a lot of black characters. It's just a fact. If you see people drawing themselves as a black character or, or, or turning like someone like Goku or Sailor Moon as a black character, it's not a means to wipe away the color of that person's skin. They want to embody the spirit of that character. They want to be that character. Just like how when you were little, you want to dress up like Superman. You want to dress up like uh, Thor or any of those superhero characters. It's not meant to be controversial. It's ju- this is just a fact of how it is. When I was young, the only black characters that I would like to watch are uh, Steve Urkel from Family Matters, uh, Will Smith in Fresh Prince, and uh, Queen Latifah in Living Single. And if you haven't heard of those shows, Google them. They're black sitcoms from the 90s because in the 90s we actually kind of had we had the black shows and then the white shows but they would never mesh together they would have guest stars but they would never mesh together it was so interesting but everybody watched them you know um so that's just my preface so to start off i want to talk about some of my favorite black characters it's all going to be in cartoon world and we're going to talk about storm all right mm. i loved i love storm from the original 90s x-men and i love the way she talked i loved her commanding voice uh she was just so powerful and commanding and she flew for that sky without a care and j- just I never took it seriously. I always took it as a comedy bit. Like, oh, oh, the sale at Bloomingdale's. We need to get there, Jubilee, before all the jackets and babushkas are gone. Wind. Like, I would die. And um, when they put her in Marvel versus Capcom, I was like, heck yeah. Me and Wolverine and Storm, we're going down. Let's go. So that, that was great. I didn't idolize her. But I still loved her. You know, she was like a great character. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, she had a great costume. Yes. That iconic and, white fit. And she always mm-hmm. delivered lines like she was having an orgasm. Yeah. Or constipated or something. Yeah. She was memorable because everything about her was so memorable. I remember her. She had claustrophobia. There was an episode about that. <laughs> yeah wasn't it when she was in the elevator yeah she's like oh, the walls are coming in <laughs> sweet Christmas oh. oh it's just it made me laugh yeah oh, spe- speaking of sweet Christmas um, yeah Luke Cage uh, the Luke Cage Netflix show at least season one of it still pretty good holds up mm-hmm. i love mike coulter's depiction of the character i hope we see him again someday in the mcu mm-hmm. so uh, had a great hip-hop soundtrack and he was he was a man for the people he was a man for harlem mm-hmm. so he definitely deserves a shout out but also we got miles morales half puerto rican half black super yeah i know um when he debuted in the comics, a lot of people, uh, found, they saw themselves in him because, you know, there's not a lot of Latino superheroes, especially half, yeah. half Afro Latinos. And he, I like him better than Peter Parker, to be honest, man. Like, I feel like I can relate to him more. Yeah, the, he has a good moral compass. He's always trying to help people. He's close mm-hmm. to his Uncle Aaron. Mm-hmm. I'm close to my Uncle Al. So, mm-hmm. And he can turn invisible, which is always a great time. I know I do a lot of things if I can turn invisible, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, his costume is great. Even in the video game, he, he has like a, a hip-hop beat whenever he goes swimming, swinging around New York. And he 
he has the swagger of a young black teen. So like that he the thing is like he's a young black teen, but a lot of them just want to just be a regular kid. And we forget that, that kids just want to listen to music, play games, do stupid stuff, you know, and you really got to feel for that. Of course, it's important. I know you got a bunch, so. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to shout out. We could discuss this together. Static Shock. Oh, yeah. I forgot to put that on my list. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, we got to discuss this together because I felt like Static Shock was the first really good just black starring kids TV show. It talked about gun violence. It talked about racism yes. in a very good way. Um and not in a weird, oh no, this teacher said you were black and that you can cannot sit here. That is a shame. You know, it wasn't like that at all. It was really good. It was more of a, yo, dude, this kid's having a mental breakdown in school. He's going to bring a gun and shoot his bullies. Like, that's what really happens. That's the shit that really happens. And they talked about, look, you need to go to therapy, get help, ask for somebody to to help you or um they talked about black kids having a harder time reading with dyslexia it was a really deep show and i'm so glad that i got the opportunity to like see it as a kid because it, it was up there with batman beyond yeah it was in the same universe as batman beyond yeah that's right it was part of the dc animated universe and uh it never the show never talked down to its audience. It would uh, mm-hmm. incorporate these themes and topics organically. Mm-hmm. Virgil's friend Richie's father was a racist, and mm. they touched on that really well. But in general, the show was just cool, man. Again, it has some great music, some cool bad guys. Static's powers are <laughs> awesome. The way he like he can ride on a trash can lid. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the commercial. They're like, yo, Batman has the Batmobile. Superman can fly. Static Shock has a trash can lid. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny, though. They didn't make it, like, seem gross. Or like, oh, because he's black, he can't afford something. No, it's just a means for transportation. And they didn't focus on terrible stereotype. It was just, this is it. This is just a kid. He's being innovative with what he has, and that's good. Yeah, great theme song. Um, the show ran for four seasons. It's a great watch. Like if I saw it on TV right now, I'd be watching it. I'd be like, "It's amazing." He hasn't been adapted into live action yet. James Gunn. I thought they were going that. to. I thought they were going to, because they were hinting at a Static Shock movie years ago. Oh yeah, they were hinting at a lot of things years ago. Remember when like Ava. Duvnay was supposed to do a New Gods movie. That never mm-hmm. happened. We were supposed to get a Cyborg mm-hmm. movie. DC is definitely clueless. Yeah, that's true. Oh, the other one. The other phrase. So, I just want to say a shout out to Dwayne McDuffie. He was the creator of Static Shock. He died due to health issues. And he was only 49 when he died. He, was died, he died really young. And Here's the thing. I learn a lot about these black creators and animators from white people. Wow. Mostly white people. They tell me who they, they who these creators are and what they had to go through. That's the, that's the most extraordinary. I learned about Dwayne McDuffie from my comic book guy. When I, you know, and my comic book guy wanted to make sure that whatever I liked that I should explore who they, who the creators are and what adventures they go on. Like that's amazing. So shout out to my guys at cave comics. Love you guys. <laughs> oh, that was so wholesome. That yeah. Was very wholesome. Um, yeah. Uh, we got to talk about the boondocks. Yeah, let's talk about the boondocks. Like, I can't pick a character. All of them are great. 
they're all five star characters. I I was watching a few episodes recently, and the show holds up so well, so well. Just the comedy. It's also very relevant to today. Yes, it's a it's relevant. You know, unfortunately, it's a lot of the things that they talk to touch upon still go on today. But again, they make it they make it funny. You know, and it's it's a timeless show and i'm talking about only the three the first three seasons because season four was bad yeah it was really bad it was forgettable the creator was not involved in that season and it was bad but yeah riley and huey they're black all-stars man they're gonna go down as one of the you know one of the best cartoon characters of all time easily like the voice actors had a great cast of talent and again, it's it's just timeless. You could just throw on the Doug Nificent episode. Yeah, Nificent. <laughs> so plain too. The black jacket. It's 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 great time. Uh, highly recommend the Boondocks wherever the hell it's streaming. But um, I want to I want to buy it on DVD because I'm old and I like physical media. I have the first two seasons and not the third one, for whatever reason. But yeah, I would definitely go and buy them. I feel like everybody should watch the show for educational purposes. <laughs> Hell yeah! It, it it really does put perspective into perspective how ignorant both black and white people can be. Of course, um, damn, what's his name? I, I'm Uncle a, Ruckus. Yeah, Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> Like how you you're never gonna find another character like Uncle Ruckus anywhere else. He is so it's true. He, he you know he just refuses to believe that he's black. <laughs> he's like that um that um guy from the the Dave Chappelle skit the blonde yeah. KKK <laughs> member. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. <laughs> and also like Uncle Ruckus is there's a lot of Uncle Ruckuses around right now and what i mean by that is if you like sometimes on youtube i'll get a feed of like black women or black men talking about like how like pretty much verbatim uncle ruckus things but they think they're being serious like diversity is terrible we should be segregated and i'm like what excuse me excuse me poor wiper yeah, it was weird. I had to like block that so I won't feed myself garbage. You know what I mean? Anyway, back on track. Who's what's yours? Oh wait, no, you said you you were saying Boondocks. Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay, my next one. I'm gonna go obscure for a moment. Okay. So there's a show called Gem and the Holograms. It's a really fun show about these girls who are orphans, but they're adults. So they live in like a big home that was given to uh, the main character's Jem. And Jem's dad passed away and she inherited everything from him. So they live in a big foster home. Uh, she inherited a record company. And Gem and the Holograms was like the Power Rangers. You had the Asian girl. You had the black girl. You had the main white girl. And then they had to replace one of them, just like in the Power Rangers, with, I think this one girl was... Uh, Filipino? She had an accent. I think there was a Latino girl, yeah. I don't, I don't remember right off the bat, but I love this show because the black girl in it, her name was Shayna. And Shayna was the... I think she was the guitarist or the drummer and she was also a fashionista she was into fashion designs and she made all of the outfits for gem and the holograms and if she couldn't finish the outfits she'd do the blueprints and have the hologram technology scan it and would just design some holographic wear for the girls i was like dude this is awesome and they touched on racism too it's like is this but it was way more subtler meaning she had her plan stolen by the opposing team and that could be just done by anybody but she didn't get recognition for it <laughs> you know I, I, it was I a good think I've ever seen an episode of Jim and the Holograms and I've heard about it my entire life 
Gem and the Holograms is one of those shows that if it was filmed in a live action, it would do just as well because it was like a teen drama. They made a movie and it bombed. It, because they didn't follow the Gem and the Hologram formula. That Gem and the Holograms movie was the Cheetah Girls. It was not wow. Gem and the Holograms at all. And they tricked fans who loved Gem and the Holograms, who loved the 80s one, and said that they were going to follow the 80s one, and they didn't. So forget that movie. It doesn't exist. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah. So Your turn. You since you mentioned Power Rangers, got to give a shout out to the original Black Ranger, Zach mm-hmm. Taylor. Who I've met in person, played by Walter Jones. Oh shit! He is the man, and he is coming back to Power Rangers in April for the 30th anniversary. I'm excited because he has never come back as his character. He's done a few voice, uh, voice gigs here and there, but he's coming back, and I hope he busts out the hip hop keto. Cause yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I'm like, yo, he's dance fighting. Like, that's so cool. I thought so too. Cause I, I used to be able to do those exact moves as a kid. Now I can't. Yeah. I'm excited for that. And, um, shout out to the, the blue Ranger and the power Rangers 2017 movie. He was definitely, uh, the best character in that roster. So shout yeah. out to him. As with him. I like that one. Yeah. Billy. A Billy. I, I wish there was a sequel to that film. I really do. Yes. I really like that one. I really do. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Nickelodeon's first black sitcom. It was called My Brother and Me. <laughs> the forgettable <laughs> one. <laughs> I I like that show. They only ran for one season, thirteen episodes, but I remember watching it a lot when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I just remember the catchphrases like "Don't hold your breath." Yeah, it, it was. They had the light skinned sister who looked like she was adopted. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it was basically like, like a black boy meets world sort of, with more <laughs> pranks. Yeah, but that's what I liked about it. It was just goofy. It wasn't like trying to teach you a lesson. Well, maybe it was. I don't. Re- I just remember them like pranking each other and. Doing goofy shit. It's don't forget, show. don't forget the goo punch. Goo <laughs> punch. <laughs> yeah, it was goofy. All right, my next one on my list. I just I'm checking them off. Right, we're checking them off. I want to talk about. Let's see, Susie Carmichael. Come on, let's go. Oh snap. The now, official Rugrat. So Susie Carmichael did is like she really changed the game in the Rugrats world. I ended up liking her, but not like obsessively, but she was memorable. She was a memorable character. And um she was Angelica's rival, supposedly, and was often bested by her. By by um she would often like if Angelica and her would play a game, she'd kill it. She'd be like, "Okay, I got this," and bam, Angelica would lose. Wait a second. Wait a second. So her name is Susie. Uh huh. Is that you're saying she's a Mary Sue? Oh no! <laughs> you're right. Uh... Well, on- honestly, I get I get why people make black characters the way that they do because people don't seem to realize I used to watch a lot of old films from like the 1920s all the way to 1960. And a lot of black people were portrayed as dumb, goofy, really ignorant stereotypes, like bad stereotypes. And now people are complaining like, oh, this black person can't have flaws or whatever. It's like, well, they could be super smart. The other main character is super smart. What's the difference? You know? So Susie was pretty smart. Angelica was average. But everybody liked Angelica because her tweak was 
She was just a bad kid. Oh, yeah. She needed to be spanked with the belt, mm-hmm. the chancla. Yeah. She needed, she needed to go to military school. She did until all grown up happened and she like calmed down a lot. Well, you know, she's probably taking Xanax off screen. Oh my gosh. Like, I'm tired of acting like a baby. Uh, talk about this uh, black best friend trope you were explaining to me earlier. Okay, so people don't know this or will realize this or remember this, but in the 2000s, the sitcoms, there was there was a writer's strike, right? And the writer's strike was the beginning of the boom in uh, reality TV shows, okay? Meaning they didn't want to hire writers to write shows anymore. They would have reality TV shows. So whatever shows that were written wouldn't really have diversity. They would have one black, one black person, one Spanish person, or one Latina person in the cast so think about a show from the early 2000s where like you'd have a memorable character I, I'm, I'm only thinking the office because there's only one black person in the office and stanley yeah he and the, they he was the angry black guy the stereotype yeah they'd be funny but they really wouldn't stand out uh cleveland from the cleveland uh, from not the Cleveland show. Uh, Cleveland from Family Guy. Again, he'd and be the just Cleveland show. Yeah, and the <laughs> Cleveland show. He wasn't even important in his own show. Uh, it would be like the token black friend. Think about um, token. Token. <laughs> He's he was literally the point of the stereotype he was literally like explaining the whole thing without even having to explain it token would just be there being an individual but cartman and specifically would have to point out that he's black all the time or do some racist things and also the black best friend would be sassy uh especially if there was a woman or would do wacky black thing not black things wacky things it would just be a really weird because you would hear in the in the 2000s, oh, he's just a token black guy, you know? Uh, and I get it. The, yeah, you get it. I, I don't want to nail a, the put a <laughs> whatever. I don't want to nail that, but you get it now. I get it. I get it. Uh, let's see. I got a few. We got to talk about Blade. What's yeah. This blade, not Sticky Fingers. That, that Bad Blade TV show. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Talk about. Ew, there was a show? I thought that was gone. Yeah, I, I showed you a clip of it. And you're like, what in the CW is this shit? Oh, that's right. I did say that. <laughs> I remember now. No, Wesley Snipes' Blade is iconic. You know, he helped usher in the age of superhero movies that we're currently in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm still waiting. We're still waiting on that reboot. It was supposed to come mm-hmm. out this year, but they done fucked it up, so they got to delay it to next year. And uh, hopefully it'll be worth the wait. Release the Black Girl movie <laughs> <laughs> so we can rift on it. Go ahead. He had uh, the iconic line of some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. Yeah, that was so great. <laughs> no, but it's such a good phrase. I should make that a sticker. Just... Blade saying motherfuckers try to ice skate up here. <laughs> yeah. They study that line in film classes, I bet. They try probably to, do. Try to it. But yeah, the first two Blade movies, awesome. The third one, not so great. He didn't even want to be there. So they use a stunt double for a lot of shots. It's a hot mm-hmm. mess. But yeah, thank thank goodness for Blade. So funny. I love Blade. It was, you know, I, I watch a lot of movies because of you, mostly with you, but because of you. And I, I can have like really good conversations with other friends now. And they were like, oh, well, did you see this? I was like, guess what? I got out of my little rat hole and I did. <laughs> yeah, you finally saw Titanic for the first time. No, I saw Titanic with my dad as a kid and it was horrible. Yeah, it's just a bunch of white people drowning in water. 
It was like God. a white version of Hurricane Katrina. Oh my! Oh wow! <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um. Okay. Real quick. Just some shows with a token. Uh, I finally jogged my memory. Uh, Third Rock from the Sun. Uh, we have Simbi Kali, played by Nita Campbell. Uh, Felicity, for all of you people who just... I don't know. Felicity is... <laughs> Ellen, Elena Taylor. Um, Holly Berry played a lot of black best friends, especially in that terrible 007 movie. Remember that? Ooh, die... <laughs> Die Another Day, yeah. Yeah. I remember that one because it has the Madonna song. Yep. I'm even going to say Beyonce in... Uh, Austin Powers. Yeah, and I did not like that movie. It was just... Oh, it was weird. Felt like it was an out-of-body experience. Well, clearly, you don't know what true cinema is. Hush up. Uh, Telly, remember Telly from Salute Your Shorts? Yeah, she was the one with the, like the backward baseball cap. Yep, she was the only black person there. Yeah, it's salute your shorts, man. That was a good show. It was a good show. Uh, last two, Jackie in Seinfeld, because literally, I I didn't see any black people in Seinfeld for years. I know <laughs> it was like they didn't exist be- before a certain time period. They were like, yep, shorts. yep. And it's like, you know what? We'll just put them in there. Teddy from Full House. Oh, yeah. Wasn't he played by the the smart guy? Or was um, like yes. Was, yes, he was. Yeah. He was. Um, and a lot of sitcoms would always have one and only one black person in it. Yeah, remember Would, when friends try to introduce a black friend? That happened? Yeah, and then like the, the year later the show got canceled. <laughs> show got canceled because it was boring. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. No, Sorry yeah. people, if you like fr- yeah, you're right. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I tried watching Friends and it just was not happening. If you like it, good for you. All right, that's it. That's it for the token black person in the show. But there was, there's hundreds more, by the way. I'm just not going over them. Yeah, you did your research. I, I, well, because this has been in my mind for decades. I kept thinking to myself, huh? Yeah. What other black characters were in shows that I liked that were not primarily black sitcoms? Hmm. Oh, next character. What's your turn? Your turn. Your turn. I was going to say, we're talking sitcom characters. I put down Jazz from The Fresh Prince. I love Jazz. Come on now. Jazz got that swag. Even though every time he go to Uncle Phil's house, he's getting thrown out. And they use the same footage every single time. It's great. And the same sound effect. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, man. I always thought Jazz was super cool. Like He's like that cool friend that you you aspire to be. Yeah, just, like, man. And then he hangs out with you for some reason. I love it. All right. This is going to be very obscure. Okay. There was a little black girl in Tiny Toon Adventures, and she only appeared a few times, and her name is Mary Melody. Rings a bell. I'm going to show you a picture of her. But I think she was just supposed to be a parody on the name mary melody they just put her in there she didn't do much i thought she was cool but that was about it here i'm gonna show you a picture oh snap we got a message yeah message wow i don't remember her at all you see exactly you're not gonna remember her they would just put her in there and that was it this chick is on a milk carton right now Dang. Bring back Mary Melody. She's on a chunk. Bring her time. back. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching yeah. Tiny Toons the other day and I was like, oh yeah, she existed. Yeah, the animation style reminds me of Baby's Kids. That's funny. Yeah, she... Baby's Kids. A timeless classic. 
even got a video mm-hmm. game. Baby's uh, I made him play the game. It's broken and impossible to play. Yeah. Do you remember when Shaq was an actor? Do you remember Ew. Kazam? <laughs> yes, I, I do. Because I was I thinking, remember. <laughs> I was thinking of like other black superheroes, and Kazam just came to mind. I'm like, it's, it's not a superhero, but uh, they uh, they marketed the shit out of that movie. They, they like, did. They, they even had him. like candy deals. Yeah, they wanted Shaq to be like the next big thing, and he, he just flopped. And then he mm-hmm. was in another movie called Steel. And that was terrible. The costume mm-hmm. just looked, he looked like a tin man with a five o'clock shadow. Mm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's funny, though. Uh, or let's talk about other black superhero movies that were terrible in the 90s Meteor Man. <laughs> That movie was awful. Was that Eddie Murphy or the Wayans Brothers? No, Robert Townsend. Oh. Uh, if you even remember what Robert Townsend looks like. Uh, I probably have an idea it's somewhere in my subconscious. Yeah, it was a budget of $20 million and the film only made $8 million. Oh, nice. <laughs> Sinbad was in it. Didn't the Waynes brothers come out with a superhero movie? Yes, they did. Was and it was, it was also terrible. Uh, people, I, I noticed that film. I see it in a lot more households. Uh, and you can't even name it. That's just funny. You know what well, I'm talking I can't. about, but you don't know what the name is. It's called Blank Man. Yeah, Blank I, Man. dude, I, I, I can't tell you how many houses i've been to and i see blank man dvds because they're and i'm like away. interesting <laughs> they probably were it was such a bad i saw that film too it was terrible people were using blank man dvds to to warm up their homes they would throw it on the fireplace oh my god <laughs> yeah what about cat <sighs> Catwoman. Yeah, that could also warm up a fireplace, if you ask me. <laughs> it's time for the remix. Catwoman's gonna get that guy, make some makeup, and then die. I don't know. We well, gotta talk about the, the blackest animated movie of all time. The Goofy movie. Yes. So, the Goofy movie is beloved by many young black millennials because one it was part of our childhood and two power line and three a single father raising a child by himself it's very wholesome yeah speaking of power line you have you ever seen that movie called holes yeah uh decades ago and you remember the guy that played zero no well, he grew up and then he made like a live action version of the power line dance. Oh, oh, no way. Yeah. And, Did and you I, show that to me? Because I saw a lot of them. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay. We'll watch it. Do we want to list off some more? I got a few Just, more. Okay. Name your few more and I'll name my few more and then we'll meet in the middle. All right. Here is the video. Okay. Well, watch. I'll watch the video after the. Uh... Yeah, I'll I'll put the video in the description. You guys can watch it too. Um, we got a uh, Lincoln from Broad City. Probably. Oh yeah, I love Lincoln. My favorite black character on a sitcom because I can relate to this guy so much. He's just so chill and nonchalant, and he's just doing his thing. And you know, his relationship with Alana is like my favorite on screen relationship of any TV show. It's it's so realistic because you know, they start off friends with benefits and they become boyfriend girlfriend, and then, well, spoilers, you know, (laughs) for Broad City. Mm -hmm. But yeah, their journey is just so realistic because a lot of these relationships on TV shows just feel so fake and manufactured. Theirs just feels really authentic and what you would go through in real life so uh yeah and he's so funny like i love hannibal burris in general like he's such a funny dude 
my brother doesn't like him. He's like, he doesn't do anything. And I'm like, dude, that's the point. He's just not, chill. Not every comedian has to be at a 10. You can be at a 5 and still be funny. Exactly. Exactly. He's just, just mad chill, and I, I love him for that. Word. Um, I Shout out to Rue for Euphor- from Euphoria, played by mm-hmm. Zendaya. That I love girl. Zendaya. Yes, that girl can act her ass off, and mm-hmm. no matter what you think of the show, she's the best part, hands down. There's an episode where um, she's like going through withdrawal from heroin, and she's running from the cops, and she's trying to steal money, and it was filmed like an action movie, man. Like it was crazy. Mm-hmm. But uh, Zendaya always brings the heat, whether you're you're crying for her or you're mad at her or you're sad about her. It's a great show. Then uh, I love it. I got a uh, Falcon from the Marvel movies, who's now Captain America officially yep. in the MCU. I can't wait to see what his movie looks like. It's coming out next year because there's a lot of naysayers out there that think Falcon shouldn't have the shield, but I disagree. I think he's going to be a great replacement for Cap. He just it follows the comics, and I don't understand why people are upset about that. Yeah, because people. People need to be upset about everything. That's the age we live in. Like, we can't have nice things. Yeah. Go ahead. But I'm excited to see what he does in the future. I met him in person. He's a nice. Guy. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And you um, always meet all those nice people. I know. I'm such a celebrity influencer. And mm-hmm. of course, last but not least, you got my boy T'Challa, played by. The late great Chadwick Boseman. He was very severely missed in the last Black Panther movie, but his uh his fewer performances in MCU will live on forever. And let's say um Shaq Steel walked so T'Challa's Black Panther could run. <laughs> Funny, I love it. Yeah, I I I will say, I know people are like, oh, I like DC better. But you got to admit, DC has set the foundations for what a good superhero uh, origin story beginning uh, should begin and end. Like, the middle can be choppy, but, like, they really set the bar. I'm just saying. You can't see you, Marvel. Marvel. Marvel set the bar. Oop. Yeah. DC DC has to do some fixing. Yeah. <laughs> DC needs to is wiping the slate clean. They're getting castrated. I don't hate DC. It's just Batman's the only thing that matters <laughs> to me. You don't hate DC. You're just disappointed. Oh. It's like, definitely cut off. I'm disappointed. Which is worse. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah. Dude. You never got that from your parents? I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. That's like the yeah. worst thing you could hear from your parents. That's true. That's very true. I'd rather you be mad. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right. Yeah, DC Let only me... cares about Batman because there's like five Batman in the Flash movie coming out. Oh my God, right? It's like, oh, oh, oh let's only focus on one. We can't do anything else. Um. All right. Let me just go- do some quick ones uh oh man i put keisha but i don't even remember where the, where, where keisha came from never mind okay foxy love from drawn together maxine from uh batman beyond i really love her uh ohura from star trek yeah uh, uh let's just see penny proud she got a sequel louder and prouder it's doing well yeah i heard steve urkel woke. Oh, became woke. Oh my god, everything's woke. Oh my lord. Uh, stupid Gaia from uh, Captain Captain Planet. I heard Captain Planet became woke, it invented the concept. It's a recycle. Oh my god, recycle or die, cycle or die. And another, this is this is this is big. This was big for me. Barrett from Final Fantasy VII. Ooh, we got a snuck a video game character in there. I, like I sure did. Like, I never really used him that much in the original, but I love him in the new 
remake in the remake interpretation because his voice actor was great. He was just funny. He he lo- he's a family man, another single father, single black man raising a daughter. Um he cares about the earth. Uh he loves his friends and they didn't even have to include racism in it. He's just like there's black and white people in this universe. They don't care. So Shout out to the creators for Final Fantasy's Barrett. He's a treasure. I love playing with him. So there's that. Yeah. If I had to pick someone from a video game, be Sheva Olimar from Red Yeah, Sheva. She's that girl backing up Chris. If it wasn't for her, Albert Wesker would still be out there. Hey, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, and you dressed up as her. So I sure did. You cosplayed as her, which was awesome. You're going to talk about Gerald from Hey Arnold? Here oh, I forgot about Gerald. I was going to put him in there because Gerald? So, okay, I call it the the Gerald duplication. So there was a Gerald and the black kid from Captain Planet and the black kid from Magic School Bus. Very similar in vibe. Oh, and and recess, all have the same vibe. Yeah, man, <laughs> I, I never thought of that. They got like, they're, they're cool best friend, you know. Yep. It's, it's and cool. the black kid from the Mick, not McDonald's, from the Burger King Kids Club. <laughs> what? Look at the compare them. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Hold on. It's a fever dream you having. No man, there's a black kid from the Burger King Kids Club. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a picture and you're gonna be like, oh shoot. Oh they yeah. only knew one black kid. Wow. And it was this. He looks like the guy from Recess, Vince. He sure do. They and all they got had the same haircut. Yup, the same high top fade, almost the same clothes, but different color scheme. Jesus. Yeah. I wanna make like a parody video like oh my god the 90s was woke and we need to cancel the 90s you got the planeteer fit yep uh yeah check that sweater at the door bro (laughs) we had a different design but like okay now i'm gonna type in uh who's the black kid from recess vince all right you you go be mad. Are you ready now? Are you gonna you go be ready. mad at me? All right, look at Vince now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. And, and what was the other? A magic school bus. Yo, why does Vince look like a Pez dispenser though? I don't know. His mouth. They is used open. they used the same color palettes, the so same green. hair. Always green, even the kid from the Magic School Bus. I'm just, listen, and here's what I learned. Um, the, a lot of these directors don't know of oh, many black kids. No. Yes! <laughs> it's see. all there! It's all there! Jesus Christ. We need, we need to like, take all of these and make the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> listen. I would not lie to you. I know my shit, especially when it comes to cartoons. Um, Let's put all these characters one more. in a thumbnail together, please. <laughs> the black kid conundrum. Oh, like, I wanted to talk about this, too, how in the 90s, the stereotypes would be so extreme, especially with little Asian boys. Um, and the... And the uh, I guess the kids with red heads too. Like they they li- they thrived off of those stereotypes. How come kids that had red hair were always snitches? <gasps> You're right, especially the magic school bus. We're always snitching. Yo, I'm dead. Uh uh we we got another one from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. CJ to me. It's probably the best Yo. protagonist of those games. Everybody loves CJ. Uh oh, wait. <laughs> you found another one. <laughs> you oh. gonna be mad? <laughs> <laughs> it's like they 
knew only knew one black person. <laughs> it's oh, oh my god, P- it's, Yoko! Please put all these people in the same picture. Please. Yeah, do it for me. Here, I'm gonna do this. Do you want it as a thumbnail size? Yeah, I want to use it as the thumbnail for this episode. <laughs> du, 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 black, or just put Black History Month. <laughs> It's so true, man. All these characters have the same fade. Same fade, same color scheme. Um, personalities were a little different. I think Gerald is the only one out of all of them with a... He got the Marge hairstyle. Yeah. They all had fades. Du, 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 du. Don't be mad at me, because I knew it. this. It's not your fault. <laughs> no, it's not. But... I read, I'm sorry, I keep hammering it in. I read that a lot of these directors don't know. They're like, I don't know what an African-American kid looks like. Uh, I have a friend of a friend who has a black kid. Let's just put him in green. You know what? No, don't forget it. What's the kid from Captain Planet look like? Wow. I mean, hopefully you can see from the thumbnail <laughs> what we're talking about. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, yeah. Put it in post. I could probably make a shitty thumbnail of all these guys if I tried. Put it in Microsoft Paint. So funny. You could do Canva. Canva's really easy. I'll show you after. Canva. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this up. All right. Uh, uh, Let's do the Dimensional Diary. In this week's episode, let's, let's list off one of our favorite black actors and our favorite black musician okay yeah uh you asking me first yeah girl oh uh queen latifah for uh, because like i still listen to her older albums um i love her mostly for her, her acting too but I would say for a black actress, this is hard. Or actor, this is hard because there's there's quite a few black actors nowadays that are more prominent that I really like. Uh, shoot. <laughs> it's fine. Queen Latifah is a great answer. She's the equalizer. Yeah. yeah. Sunday nights on CBS. Yeah. I'll I'll say I'll say Will Smith, even though he smacked a bitch. So. <laughs> Leave it at that. Ooh, Smith. Controversial. Yeah. But he ain't drugging people, he ain't is he? <laughs> not that I know of. It's true. You you're you are you are not wrong there. Yeah, I really like Ice Cube. Ice Cube is a great actor and his son is following in his footsteps. His son's mm-hmm. a cocaine bear and yeah, whenever he's in something I just the movie gets better. Um Ice Cube is just He's great comedic timing. You know, he could play the angry black guy really well in the Jump Street movies. But he's also a good writer. Love mm-hmm. the Fight trilogy. Love mm-hmm. this fight. And uh, Anaconda. Yeah, Ice Cube got a good uh, filmography. He's, he's always someone to look out for in a movie. Favorite black musician? Well, it's got to be. It's got to be Janet. Janet, man. All the way. Yeah. I gotta love you so some Janet. Janet, Janet Jackson. Yeah, but there's, there's a lot. A lot of other ones too, but I'm gonna go with, with Janet for now. But I'm here it. for it. Uh, I got a lot of black singers, and most of them are from like 90s, early 2000s. Like Eric Badu. Uh, I love Aaliyah. May she rest in peace. Uh, I, um,. I was listening to one the other day. Aretha Franklin. I went to see a tribute concert with her. Um, Missy Elliott. Top. Top. Yeah, Missy. What? Yeah. Uh, Neo up there. Seal. Usher. Yeah. Michael Jack, of course. Mm-hmm. Talib Kweli. Oh, yeah. He's really good. Yeah. Outcast. For sure. Shake it, shake, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid pressure. 
For the love of God, Outcast, make another album, please. Yeah, come on, what the heck's going on? Please. Outcast, what's going on? You okay? You need some juice? <laughs> Do something. Anything. Uh, Funny. Shout out to DMX, RIP. And yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of great Yeah, there's a lot. I feel like, I feel like, oh, this other black actor, uh, Janelle Monet, top oh, 10 yes. right there, man. She's blowing up. She, the Glass Onion, I could, I could see her blowing up from that and doing a lot more movies in the future. She was just a powerhouse in that film. And she I'm in love with her. She, she does. Too. Yo, um, she tweeted that people were saying that she looked like the Monopoly man. And she's like, oh. Well, for that comment, no new album for you. Canceling it. <laughs> so funny. I love her so much. Like, I didn't realize she existed until my friend sent me Tightrope. And uh, I was having a really bad work day. And when I mean work day, it was really bad. I got demeaned at work. Um, it was mostly sexism things involved. Like, well, you're a woman. You really shouldn't be doing this type deal. And I was like, I got to get out of this job. And I heard one of Janelle Monet's songs about like, I'm just going to quit. I'm using my credit card to get out of this deal. And I'm going to make it. And I was like, thank you, man. I need to hear that. So shout out to Janelle Monet. Thank you. And I got better jobs. <laughs> so Yeah, she made quitting her job cool before Beyonce did. Oh... She uh, she debuted on Outkast's last album, Idy Wild. Maybe that's where I heard her because her her it. music back then is so different than it is now. Oh, and Lizzo, I like Lizzo too. Yes, she definitely know how to play the flute. If you know what I mean. Oh. <laughs> All right, this was a good time. I hope you guys. We're educated, and uh, you should seek out some of these shows that we talked about today. You know, there's there's somewhere out there in the internet. Mm-hmm. Especially Static Shock. Yeah, go support Static Shock so we can get a live action movie. Yeah, absolutely. All right, friends. Uh, thank you for the new subscribers. We got a few new ones this week. We appreciate you listening. Feel free to leave us a comment. We would like to know what you think and then completely ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> leave you on red. We're not even popular, so we'll get there one day. I bet you we will. We're just going to blow up one day and everyone's going to be like, where'd this happen? Listen, our Kung Pao video has 5,000 views and counting. No way. <laughs> That's so why. great. <laughs> this is Kung Pao. It's Kung Pao, baby. All right, guys. Take care. Stay warm. And join us next time on the Dimensional Rift. Bye. Okay, so I forgot, you're like, yeah, we gotta. <laughs> we forgot to talk about magnitude from Community. Pop, pop. Magnitude from Community is so influential. He has his own pop, pop, pop figure. That's right. And he was in Harry Potter once, so he's probably canceled. Uh, nah, he probably wouldn't be canceled for he know not what he do. Yeah, it's not his fault. Yeah. Change lives. Change the game. Like the Burger King Kids Club, where it's cool to be a kid. <laughs> Don't know, freaky, I'm in